went straight, we went, sorry.
actually dedicated to. Okay, who is it for? It's dedicated to everyone from Gosport. Give us a wave! Yay! Went to crowd, loving it. Excellent! <laughs> Excellent! Now we've got something else a bit different for oh, you. Hey, oh. I'm not going to sing the solo, don't worry about it. And we're not, it's not rapping, something totally different. You don't even be able to need to move your mouth for this, do you? It's like a Westlife mark, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, we're going to do a clap offering to the Lord. It says in scripture, doesn't it, to clap your hands, all ye people. And that is what we're going to do in a minute. We'll take a lower this. Okay, I'm going to clap a few rhythms to you. I'm hoping you'll have a little drum beat over there to help me out with it. And you're going to clap them back to me. Okay? So give us a wave, give your hands a wave, let me see your hands. Yours are a bit dirty, Keith. Take a wave. <laughs> yes, okay, so if we can have a bit of a rhythm, then we'll go straight into a song after this, I think. Give it a beat. This will go into Days of Elijah. You always say that about this song, Catherine. You've got to sing this song as if your mortgage has just been paid for, the day of jubilee, and all debts have been lifted and all cancelled. Absolutely. Margaret Hill has mm. asked for this, but this clap rap, this clap praise will go into <laughs> Days of Elijah. Yeah, hopefully. Let's try it. I might get it wrong. Here we go.
I love that song because of this idea that God is rebuilding his temple of praise. God needs to do that within the Salvation Army. We need to rebuild our ability to praise God and get rid of a lot of the rubbish that has surrounded him and just centre on him. And I love to think when I go into a core on a Sunday morning, it doesn't matter whether there is six people there or 60. Because when we start praising, what we're doing is we're joining in with angels who are already praising continually. And so he doesn't hear my voice, he doesn't hear just a few voices. God just hears this music all the time that praises him. And that's just, that really encourages me because I think that on a Sunday morning when I go into worship, my voice starts praising with the angels. And it's just lovely because all heaven declares the glory of the risen Lord. Pam Nurse from Cardiff Canton has asked for this and it's a lovely song and it's great to, to start to conclude our day with saying Lord we acknowledge that we're just one of thousands and millions of people that have praised you today and we just have joined with the angels singing. about the musicals tonight but in the the 70s and 80s um, the musicals of, of Larson's and Gowans made a massive difference in the army I don't know whether many of you remember do you and I remember when the musical spirit was first shown and I was there and that had a dramatic impact because previously the army hadn't really talked about the Holy Spirit for a long long time and um, having that musical really brought it to the fore and, and things started to happen, I believe, because they were courageous enough to do a whole musical on the coming of the Holy Spirit. And so we thank them, don't we, for their influence over the years and their guidance. And we're going we're gonna to pray for him. And so we're going to, we've been requested we could sing How Much More. And um, what I would suggest is we sing the first and last verses of this if we can, and then we'll, we're going to pray for General John Gans.
just bring General John Gowans to you now. We thank you for him and we thank you for his life and the way that you have used his intellect to write so many wonderful lyrics that have challenged us, that have comforted us, and that have led our army forward. And Lord, in many ways it seems very cruel that now in his retirement it's that mind that should be so affected. And we will never understand that, Lord. But we thank you that we believe in a compassionate God. We believe in a heaven. And we believe that in the midst of his confusion, he will still know you because nothing can separate him from the love of God. And I just pray, Lord, that wherever he is now, that you will be with him and his family and that you would just surround him with your love. We thank you for him, Lord, and we just pray that in these coming days when his family will need you particularly so much, we know, Lord, that you're going to be there and we thank you for what you're going to do. Amen. We've got a few announcements that we want to make. The first one is about, um, what's it called? Britain's Got Talent? No, it's not Britain's Got Talent. No, no, um, Butlins has oh, got talent. Oh, Butlins has got talent. That was upstairs. Yes, if you want to be part of yes. Butlins has got talent, the, re the auditions are at quarter to three on Tuesday. If you don't come to an audition, I'm afraid you cannot take part, okay? We need to know what you're going to say before you say it. <laughs> Not that we don't trust you, but we need to check. So if you can come here at quarter to three, then we can put your name down and we'll see who we've got for Britain's Got Talent, okay? I'm sure we've got masses of talent. If you can do something peculiar, you know, stand on your head or something, or spin plates, if you spin do that. Plates. You know, it's not just for those who can sing anything, any weird and wonderful thing. I can play a record with my nose. Can you? Yes. Have you got a recorder with you? Um, I don't have got a recorder. I don't mean tape recorder, I mean a recorder you blow. No? I'll we'll have to see what I'm going to say. I'll we'll have you one. playing recorder with you. green sleeves. Oh, no. Oh. Joke. I've, can I just tell him a joke? Could I tell him a joke? It's, don't worry, it's clean. Okay. What um, do brass players fix their instruments with? The tuba glue. Oh, Is that your best one? I've got one more. Oh, thank God. Can I? Yeah, go on. Why did the banana go to the doctors? Because it wasn't peeling very well. Oh. Okay, we've got another announcement before she goes on. <laughs> now, believe it or not, this girl, who is completely lunatic, yes. but she's quite talented actually as well. You know, she, she's a very clever girl. But she's produced a CD. And they are going to be on sale the first time anywhere in the country yeah. here this week. And they, is it tomorrow? I think? Tomorrow night. I just got to with you. Tomorrow night. So it says on your programme, Richard Phillips, it's actually forget about that. Okay. Forget about it. Don't because get in. Anna's doing the first half hour. So you can come to the first half hour and go off if you want afterwards. No, no, I didn't say that. Oh, it's wonderful, Lucy. Come for the whole evening, you'll enjoy it. But it's very special you're doing. I don't think his piano playing will be as good as mine. No, I like to blank, blank, blank. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
for the upbringing that I had in the Salvation Army. But I couldn't let tonight go without saying something. I love the Salvation Army, but I have two teenage sons who have already left because they can't find stuff in the army that is for their generation. I'm in a division where we have about five families who are my age in the whole of the division. We have to reach out to our generation. Yes, it was wonderful in the past, but we are in a different world now. And if that means we have to give away some of the stuff that we love to see our young people remain in this movement, then I'm prepared to do that. One of the reasons I wanted to grab my friend at the back there, and she was so desperate to do a glory march, thank you so much. But I wanted her here to remind us that she, we've got to prepare an army for her. And I would want to see this room full in 20 years time. And unless we do something about that, it won't be. So when you go back to your core, tell them you had a wonderful time celebrating the army past. But you're going to serve God in your generation. And we're going to see men and women and boys and girls say it today. And we're not going to have halls full of uniforms. We're going to have halls full of unsaved people who are nearly at the mercy seat getting saved. I think that's what you were saying to us tonight. And I just wanted to say that to you. I love the army but I want him to be here in 50 years time. And we can do that if we serve him in our generation. We're gonna sing this song together. I wanna to serve the purpose of God in my generation. I invite you to stand if you wanna do that. If you don't, that's fine, but you're gonna to have to go with it because there are enough people that wanna do it. And we wanna see these new people saved and serving him. Let's sing it together.
forward so that we can really see the kingdom of God come in our generation and for our generation. Listen now as Brian brings the other one. somehow in the night seem worse. Is that right? Yeah. That's, that's really uh, strange. And yet, there are messages in the Bible that tell us how to cope uh, with that. There's such good encouragement in the Bible. And I guess we all have our difficulties and our worries. None of us are spared uh, from uh, that. And um, this last 12 months where people are worried about family or work or relationships or finance or, or no work because the economic crisis has affected a lot of people and I fear may yet do and all those things burden us. But I had some words of encouragement that I heard uh, actually uh, from Brian Houston and he referred to this Bible passage which I want to share with you tonight which I tell you really helped me and I pass it on to you in the hope prayer that it does you too. Uh, if I turn to the very first uh, page in Psalms, I find a psalm written by David, uh, of course, who grew from shepherd boy, where he had his own problems defending his sheep, right through to take on Goliath and then become a king, his own problems, and he writes this in the book of Psalms. Psalm 3. Lord, how my enemies have multiplied, but thou, O Lord, art a shield to cover me. Thou art my glory, and you raise my head high. I cry aloud to the Lord, and he answers me from his holy mountain. I lie down, I sleep, and I awake, for the Lord sustains me. I like that verse. I lie down, I sleep, and I awake. I uh, look forward to nights like that. <laughs> you. And I pray tonight that you will have one of those untroubled uh, nights. But I think David was at peace with his God. And that's the secret of what he's able to say uh, here. No doubt he had much on his mind. But he also enjoyed the presence of God in his life. And that's what one of the offers and blessings of a Christian experience is to have that communion and that peace of God. Let's see what he says in the next couple of lines that we've just read. And he says, you are my shield around me and God is my protector. I guess, and, and, and it's a bit of military terms because it was written because of the wars in those days. I guess in military terms you think about the shield as being... Uh, covering the flanks or a rear uh, guard, uh, but in modern parlance, you, you, you say that he's got your back covered. And I find that a great, great encouragement and reassurance because David was a visionary, and so everything he was looking for was ahead. And I guess he didn't spend much time looking back. And I also guess that if we spend a lot of time worrying about what people have said and what's in the past, we'll spend a lot of time looking over our shoulder. And that's not good, 
that's, that holds us uh, back. And so God has said the past is behind you. And, and by the way, it's also forgotten. He promises that uh, as well. So it's a distraction. We should move on. And it's one of the blessings of church that we each look out for each other. So I look after your back, you look after mine, and God will make sure that all we have to look forward to is forward and not worry about what's done on in the past. The other thing he says here is that God, you are my glory. So I'm not sure, maybe I should have looked at that, but I'm not sure what the real biblical definition of glory would be. I'm sure there's people here who are well versed in theology who tell me what the definition is. But I guess in modern day feelings, we would think that our glory, personal glory, is what people think about us, whether they give us credit, uh, whether they appreciate uh, us. And often we worry because we don't pe feel that people give us credit for what we do or what we are. And that's pretty destructive and it does bring us down. But it says here, let God be your glory. In other words, it doesn't matter what other people think. And if we even look to the, the well-known song, it says, to God be the glory, right? Great things he hath done. And we can spend a lot of time worrying about whether our glory is evident to other people. But it's very clear, in fact, Isaiah says, your God will be your glory. Finally, he says, keep your head high. I guess it's human nature to be discouraged from time to time. These are all the things that can stop us resting in the peace of uh, God. And he says, you are my shield. So you've got your back covered. You sustain and uphold me. It's a wonderful promise. You are my glory. And with God's help, we'll keep our heads up, even in adversity. You know this next verse of scripture, because we're going to sing it. You might not have realised it comes from Isaiah 26, but it does where he says, You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in him. So, no wonder he was able to say, I lay down, I sleep, I woke up. And I pray that for you after a long, busy day, the peace of God will be with you this evening. Let's sing that chorus today.